Thank you for checking out this lecture on Bacon's Rebellion, a very important rebellion in early colonial history in Virginia. Those are the terms you should know when we're all done, and you all get an A on your test when you finish this lecture. Now, we got to take a little trip down memory lane and remind yourself that the people who are doing the primary kind of work in the Virginia colony is a group of people called indentured servants. Just with the way you were. And these indentured servants are the primary labor force of the Virginia. There were slaves in 1619. The first slaves were brought into Virginia, but overwhelming the majority of the workers are indentured servants. And the concept is simple. Click that little link right there if you want more details. And people are coming over to the colony in huge numbers, especially now that the starving time and the Powhatan conflicts are, are a thing of the past. People are moving on from England and coming to the colony of Virginia for a variety of reasons. I'm moving on. And as the population of Virginia grows, there becomes new issues to address. And one of the big issues was under the indentured servant contract, the whole idea was when you're done doing your work, you're going to get access to land, something that was very difficult to, difficult to come by in England. But the problem was the land that the colonists were getting was out in the backcountry, the frontier. It wasn't the Tidewater region where the wealthy and the best land was. And what was happening is there was a feeling amongst these backcountry farmers, these former indentured servants, that the colonial elite don't care about them. And that feeling of feeling discontent, of feeling that they are being ignored, comes from the fact that a series of Native American conflicts were developing over in this backcountry you see over here. Many of these English settlements, these colonial settlements, were very, were very near Native American villages or settlements. And the result is you got this conflict brewing. Um, because Native Americans, feeling that these colonists are encroaching on their land, justifiably so, this feeling amongst Native Americans, they begin a series of attacks against these farmers. Um, and many of these farmers were not very good to the Native people that were their neighbors. And the colonial elite don't really do anything. Uh, they don't really do anything to address these, these problems. And it's not just this issue of Native Americans that is causing discontent and frustration. It's other things. No! God, please, no! No! They're feeling frustrated that they can't get land when their contract is over. They're also frustrated because the Native American threat is real. And another thing is there's a lack of women in the colony. And this is going to be a big problem because if you are a woman and you have an option of marrying a very wealthy Virginia elite Tidewater aristocrat or one of these backcountry former indentured servants, you're probably going to pick not in uh, your heart's desire, but in this economic desire. It's a very different time, ladies and gentlemen. And there's other things. The Virginia Assembly, the House of Burgess, in 1670 disenfranchised most of the landless colonists. They took away their right to vote. And so you have this, this, this tension. And the, the, the object of that frustration uh, begins to be the governor, William Berkeley. Governor William Berkeley is a baller in the colony of Virginia. He's a part of this Tidewater aristocratic wealthy elite. And when the colonists demand that he do something as a result of these attacks, he doesn't. And a big reason why he doesn't is he has a very wealthy, lucrative monopoly on the fur trade with local Native Americans, and he doesn't want to damage that. And as an aristocrat himself, he's not really concerned with the, the needs or the wants or the desires of these, these farmers. What happens is he gets some demands placed his way, and his response is, of course, No, no, no. Oh, no, no, no. He's not interested. He refuses to retaliate. He refuses to grant greater political rights. And this guy comes along. <laughs> Where 
Bacon. Nathaniel Bacon, a 29-year-old. He's not one of the wealthy uh, haters out there. He himself is wealthy. He's not a former indentured servant. Um, and he starts gathering people. Um, in July of 1676, he's going to issue a declaration of the people of Virginia. And he's going to criticize William Berkeley's administration in detail. He's going to talk about the unfair taxes, the fact that his friends are appointed in high positions, the failure to attack the, the natives who are causing havoc on the frontier. Now, a little interesting side note, Bacon himself is wealthy, and part of his resentment was personal. He wanted to be a part of Berkeley's inner circle, and he's denied that. And you got this ingredient, once again, for conflict. So in this slide, you're going to see kind of the basic two sides to this event known as Bacon's Rebellion. Now here's what happens next. The demands that Bacon puts before Berkeley are ignored. And so what does Bacon do? He goes on a little bit of a rebellion. Savages, savages, barely even human. Savages, savages, killers at the core. And Nathaniel Bacon and his followers, a couple of hundred of people, um, start causing all sorts of havoc on the frontier where they start launching attacks against Native Americans. Um, and it didn't really matter if these Native people were friendly or, or peaceful uh, or not, they were attacked. And you start getting um, all sorts of um, problems for the colony of Virginia because out in this back country you have Bacon and his followers, Bacon's Rebellion, taking place. Now, this attack is not just against the Native Americans because it's also against the colonial elite. And what happens is the rebellion goes to Jamestown, and in 1676, Governor Berkeley is chased from the capital in Jamestown. A big part of it is burned to the ground. And if you think about it, this is nothing less than a civil war. You have Bacon and his followers rebelling against the elite in Virginia. You have Virginians versus Virginians. Now, if you're thinking that this is going to be some epic success story, Bacon is burning the capital to the ground, Berkeley is fleeing, it all is going to fall apart rather suddenly when Bacon dies of dysentery. Now, I want to give you a quick little Wikipedia definition of dysentery. It is an inflammatory disorder of the intestine, especially of the colon, that results in severe diarrhea containing blood and mucus in the feces. He gets super diarrhea and he dies. Once he dies, the rebellion kind of scatters. Um, the governor comes back, crushes it, hangs like 20 or so of the rebels to make a statement, and Bacon's rebellion falls apart. Now, a little theory I have, I'm working on a book, you know, why is Nathaniel Bacon so important? Why is Bacon's rebellion so important? I firmly believe that he did not die. He faked his own death and... He became Prince. Look at that. Look at the outfit. Look at the hair. They're, 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 they're... It's the same guy. Back to some serious history stuff. Now, the impact and the results of Bacon's Rebellion are enormously important, especially for those of you out there taking an AP U.S. History class. And here it is. This rebellion reveals this class tension in the colony. And a really important part of this is the wealthy planters, the aristocrat, the Tidewater elite, are concerned about the poor Virginian white and black individuals rebelling together. What if these Bacon's rebellions keep happening? And this fear leads to a very important development, and that is after Bacon's rebellion, the wealthy are going to look for a labor force that is easier to control. The indentured servant system isn't really working because these people are demanding things eventually when they get their freedom dues. And so, the big impact, the thing you should know, write it in big, bold letters if you're taking notes, is plantation owners, after Bacon's Rebellion, are going to replace indentured servants with African slaves. And slavery was already in Virginia. Ever since 1619, the first slaves came to that region. But what happens after Bacon's Rebellion is slavery itself is going to change. And but what's going to occur is slaves are going to become the primary labor force in Virginia, and slavery is going to be based upon race, 
it's going to be permanent and it is going to create the conditions uh, for a very very unique and cruel institution in the American colonies that closes us out for today do you have some bacon? Bacon. Bacon. bacon that's right I have bacon left over from dinner last night Rub some bacon on what on your hand just do it all right you guys this is the stuff you should know if you don't know rewind and check it out make sure you like the video make sure you post questions if you have them and most importantly have a beautiful day peace